Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrek. Under the patronage of the BDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, the conclusion of the Neon Defender 23 joint exercise was held with the participation of the BDF's weapons and units, the Interior Ministry's Coast Guard, the National Guard and NAFSENT. The BDF Commander-in-Chief was received by the National Guard Commander General His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, Defense Affairs Minister, Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Al Naimi and Chief of Staff, Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagr Al Naimi. Following recitations of the Holy Quran, the field marshal was briefed on the stages of the exercise by the commander of the exercise, Adnan Hussain Safar, and then a presentation on the final stage was delivered by Lieutenant Commander Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalifa Al Khalifa. The BDF Commander-in-Chief then witnessed the stages of implementing the exercise, which reflected its high level after careful planning and studying, which achieved the desired goals that could include developing training, qualifications and exchange expertise. The BDF Commander-in-Chief praised the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces that aim to enhance combat readiness and preparedness of the BDF. He praised the level of the participants of the exercise and hailed their high spirits and commitment in performing their responsibilities. He affirmed that the BDF always seeks to implement such exercises and attracts participants in order to exchange experiences and enhance the defense field to build a high, capable defense unit. In conclusion, the BDF Commander-in-Chief expressed his appreciation and pride in the joint efforts exerted that contributed to the success of this exercise, praising the constructive cooperation of everyone and their effective participation in this exercise and previous ones. After the end of the exercise, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed was briefed on a number of missions, equipment, modern weapons, and advanced military technologies and mechanisms. The exercise was attended by the Minister of Interior General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, Chief of Public Security Lieutenant General Tariq bin Hassan Al Hassan, Deputy Chief of the U.S. Mission David Brownstein, Deputy Commander of the Central Command of the U.S. Naval Forces Brigadier General Sean Bailey and a number of senior officials, officers of the BDF, the Minister of Interior, Ministry of Interior and the National Guard as well as the military attaché at the U.S. Embassy in the Kingdom of Bahrain, Colonel Christopher Floyd and a number of officials from brotherly and friendly countries.
The Minister of Labor, Jamil Ahmedan, met with Arab Financial Services AFSE CEO Samar Suleiman during his visit to the company. The minister was briefed on the recruitment plan to employ Bahrainis and reviewed the company's plan to train job seekers and university students, which takes place periodically in the facility. He affirmed the government's support for the financial services sector to attract more investment opportunities and enhance the kingdom's position as a regional center for the financial sector. He stressed the ministry prioritizes employees, citizens, or employing citizens in qualitative sectors. The minister emphasized that the interest of companies and institutions operating in the private sector in hiring nationals comes in light of the employer's conviction in the establishment of national labor and their ability to manage production, noting that the ministry aims to equip job seekers within the necessary vocational training skills to be the first choice in employment. The government of the Kingdom of Bahrain, headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, made unremitting efforts to employ Bahrainis in order to enhance the labor market with Bahraini caterers in various sectors. More in this report. Continuous efforts made by the government of the Kingdom of Bahrain in various fields that directly benefit citizens. The file of employment was one of the important elements within the national plans in order to strengthen the Bahraini labor market with Bahraini cadres in various sectors. The recent cabinet meeting reviewed the latest developments in employment and training for the year 2022 within the economic recovery plan, in which the results showed a decrease in the unemployment rate from 7.7% in 2021 to 5.4% in December of 2022, a decrease of 2.3%, which proves the effectiveness of the procedures the government has taken. Returning to the economic recovery plan that was launched in the third quarter of 2021, the plan emphasized and focused on creating promising job opportunities and making citizens the first choice in the labor market with the aim of employing 20,000 Bahrainis annually and training 10,000 Bahrainis annually until 2024. The National Employment Program, which was launched in 2019, achieved remarkable development in the Bahraini labor market, and despite the corona pandemic, the government's efforts to employ Bahraini citizens kept going. The Minister of Oil, Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed bin Dayne, inaugurated the ninth edition of the Middle East Bottom of the Barrel and Catalyst Technology Conference, BBTC MENA 2023, organized by the Euro Petroleum Consultants Company in cooperation with the Ministry of Oil and Environment with the support of a number of companies specialized in this vital and important sector with the participation of a number of senior officials. The Minister stressed the importance of continuing to hold specialized conferences that contribute to promoting the development of various sectors in the kingdom as they provide platforms to exchange expertise and experiences among all participants from different countries. He added that the event provided and or provides an opportunity for the participants to explore the best strategies and solutions for increasing conversion, improving and diversifying products, further integration with petrochemicals, reducing emissions and increasing margins. Dr. Bendena then toured the exhibition held on the sidelines of the conference and met senior specialists in the oil companies and listened to the most important solutions in this field. The Minister of Oil and Environment and Special Envoy for Climate Affairs, Dr. Mohammed bin Dayna, met with Saudi Minister of Energy, His Royal Highness Prince Abdelaziz bin Salman bin Abdelaziz Al Saud, during his visit to Riyadh. Dr. Bin Dayna affirmed the solid fraternal relations binding the two brotherly countries, noting the cooperation and coordination reached by the two brotherly kingdoms in various fields, especially in the oil sector. He added that this visit aims to discuss a number of issues related to the oil sector and areas of sustainable development of energy. He also praised the efforts made by the Saudi minister to support and promote various economic and development programs and activities in this vital field. The Minister of Works, Engineer Ibrahim Al Hawaj, and the Minister of Social Development, Sam Al Asfur, paid an inspection visit to the Bidaya Social Center project, accompanied by a number of officials in the two ministries, in order to follow up on the implementation of the project in preparation for handing it over to the Ministry of Social Development. The Minister of Works stated that the Kingdom pays great attention to projects in all fields in accordance with the visions and aspirations of His Majesty the King and the directions of the government headed by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He added that the ministry provides support to all ministries and government agencies to implement their plans and programs, indicating that Bdeya Social Center 
project has been designed and implemented according to the requirements of the Ministry of Social Development and to serve its objectives. The Minister of Social Development said that the implementation of the Alba Social Center project in coordination with the Ministry of Works reflects the level of cooperation and integration between government institutions within a single team. He thanked all the partners and supporters of this development project, in particular Alba Company, for its role in financing the largest part of the cost of the center based on social responsibility. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna Ramehi, has participated in the second edition of the Municipal Investment Forum for us in Saudi Arabia upon the invitation of Saudi Minister of Municipal and Rural Affairs and Housing Dr. Majid al hagel Ermehi has praised the objectives of the forum, which seeks to praise the private sector's contributions to the development of cities by stimulating local investments and attracting foreign investments that contribute to raising the quality of life in cities and enabling the realization of sectoral and regional strategies. She appreciated Saudi efforts to host these international investments. She affirmed the ministry's keenness to benefit from this forum and enhance investment cooperation between the two brotherly countries to exchange experiences and investment opportunities, especially in the fields of social housing and urban planning. The Minister of Housing and Urban Planning, Amna Ramehi, has held a meeting with the Saudi Minister of Municipal and Rural Affairs and Housing, Dr. Majid Lehgel. On the sidelines of her visit to the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, she commended the joint fruitful cooperation between the two countries to provide social housing and express aspirations to enhance cooperation during the next stage. Ramehi outlined Bahrain's programs to provide social housing for citizens, noting that the new housing financing program comes at the forefront of the ministry's priorities to provide immediate housing services. She highlights a massive investments in partnership with the private sector to ensure to secure decent and suitable housing for citizens in line with the government program 2023-2026. The Saudi minister also commended Bahrain's efforts to provide housing to citizens in partnership with the private sector, expressing keenness on exchanging expertise. In implementation of the directives of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to rebuild and develop mosques and all governance and to take the necessary measures to ensure the speedy construction of mosques in Selman Town, the Tenders Committee of the Sunni Endowments Council held a special session to open bids for the project to build a mosque and hall for Mohammed Bahloul in Selman Town. On the occasion, Sunni Endowments Council Chairman Dr. Sheikh Rashid bin Mohammed Al Hajri has hailed the support of His Majesty the King and the follow up of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, he affirmed that those concerned in the Department of Engineering and Maintenance Services were instructed to review the technical evaluation of bids and apply them in a professional manner, adding that the technical staff were urged to follow up on the workflow stages. The chairman of the Tenders Committee, Engineer Arif Hijris, affirmed that the committee is keen to embody the vision of the government and the Sunni Endowment Council in promoting equal opportunities and providing an opportunity for applicants. Twelve concepts have qualified for the final stage of the fifth edition of the Government Innovation Competition, FIKRA. Over the last two days, 40 concepts were evaluated. Participants presented their proposals to four committees comprising of experts and specialists. Each team was allocated three minutes to present in front of their designated committee. After the committees of experts and specialists convened, 12 concepts were selected for the final stage of the FIKRA competition. The concepts that qualify for the final stage of the competition will be presented to a jury comprising of a group of ministers who will select the most successful ideas and announce the winner of the public vote. Fikra aims to enrich a culture of innovation in the public sector and strengthen government services to meet the needs of Bahrain citizens and residents.